will be the IBF featherweight champion. Retain his belt. But how was the performance? What's next? That's what we're discussing right here on Double RT Boxing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for dedicating your time. And if you're a new viewer, hopefully you're a new subscriber after this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the time and support once again. Now, how, what, what you want to start with this one? Um, Lee Shelby, a unanimous decision, a very dominant and unanimous decision over Eduardo Ramirez. The, like I said, the only thing you can really critique uh, Lee Shelby in this performance is, I guess, not getting him out, uh, not finishing Edward Ramirez. Because I I had I had uh, Shelby clean sweep, never really in any danger, no threat. If he did get tagged, it was maybe uh, one punch at a time here and there. But it's 36 minutes, you know. You gonna you're gonna get hit. But I never never once was Lee Shelby in 20 seconds of. Uh, Fear of losing his title. Did Edward Ramirez even put a 15-second threat that the belt was going, was leaving um, Lee Shelby's waist? I didn't see anything. But Lee Shelby did a a, a nice lesson of a uh, point boxing. He back footed, front footed, pivot well. He mixed up the speeds of his shots. You could say he mixed up the power of his shots. Now, was the mixture of the power high? No. But he threw some fours to some sevens out there. You know, tap, tap, boom. You know, with that boom was a very, like, a face boom. You know, it, it wasn't too much. You know, it was a couple of his punches, a uh, slapish. Yeah. But they definitely were stinging slaps. Like, it, it, it was a, a great, great clinic, you know, the foot movement was pretty decent, his back and forth switching, um, he, 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 kept his, he kept his hands low here and there, but that's, that's his style, you know, yeah, I'm not going to knock anyone's style that makes them a winner, you know, look at Ryan Burnett, look at Josh Kelly, look at Deontay Wilder, you know, leave their styles alone if it's being productive, Sean Porter, you know, it's, if, if it's working for them, stop it. You know, you know. If, if you think it's if you think it's a crappy style, stop it. And then the world will say maybe they need to correct something. But right now, Lee Shelby style. It's not the most fan friendly because I, I would say he's a he's he he rather he's a point winner than a knockout winner. You could tell by his style. Although he did sit down on his punches a little more towards the end of the round, end of the fight, I should say, you could you could totally tell he's a he's a, a boxer, you know. Now, what is next for Lee Shelby? This is where I think it gets real interesting, cause as, as I spoke briefly on it through other videos, like uh, Dan, um, the Daniel Dubois, the Daniel Dart situation about. Going for the gusto, Rigo quitting. Like I said, I'm nitpicking. Just you know, it's a boxing talk, boxing show. You know, we, we try and do all aspects of it. It was a very smooth selling, dominating performance by Lee Shelby. But if you want to find a negative on it, he could sit down on his punches a little more. Like I said, any any of you say, hey, don't don't those who look for the knockout get knocked out. Okay, fine. Don't go looking for the knockout. But you could sit down on punches a little more. And he started to give him credit towards the end of the fight. Could he have done it sooner? Perhaps. Could he have done it? Could his punches went from four to seven instead of going four to seven. Maybe go. I mean, four to six. Maybe go from like four to nine. I think so. I think so. And how strong is his nine? 
No, like I said, it, nitpicking, nitpicking. Great performance now. Where it goes next, 2018 for Shelby. That's very interesting, considering IBF champion, his top three, uh, I believe Warrington, Quig, Frampton, or is it Frampton, Quig? It, you know, but still, flip to two and three, and that's his top three in the IBF. Warrington, Quig, and Frampton. Now, his style, his movement style, and pit padding, I believe that only works best for Frampton. Can it be effective against Quig and Warrington? I do believe so, but I believe those two fighters are going to force a situation where Lee Shelby's going to have to um, sit down at moments in the fight and fight. While his style will work for a 12 rounder against Frampton, the movement, the, 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 the punch pointing, you know, fours to sixes. I don't think he will need much power for Frampton. Not saying that Frampton can't knock him out. I think that style fits Frampton well. Whereas Quig, I think, will kind of walk him down, uh, eat some shots if he have to, especially if that's what's being thrown at him, to deliver some hard shots, and that'll slow the movement down of um, Shelby, being forced to uh, buck his feet down and fight with Quig, so I, whether he wants to do it or him not, Quig is going to force it upon him, so we'll see if he'll choose to fight more with Quig, or not fight more, but just when he does move and punch, sit down and throw hard shots, then move. As far as Warrington, I believe the same thing. I think I think the harder fight will be Quig for him. Like I said, Warrington is going to bring a faster pace. But cause I, I think he might uh, walk. Warrington might take a couple rounds on the back foot and let Shelby control the action where I think Quig is going to welcome the the, the uh, be first guy while well, Warrington I think might take a few rounds trying to take a back foot but even if they both go front foot attack on Shelby I think Warrington might do it in a faster footsteps cover more ground where I, Qu I think Quig might do it just methodical and just you know enjoy the slow process so I think I, I, I like Shelby's chances of his keeping his style against Warrington he, I, I don't think he would need to sit down even though I was, even though Warrington's gonna come at a faster pace he, I think he that slapping ish, that, that to his his low punch, seem a little faster because of Warrington's pressure of walking into some of them. I mean, more of a consistent slap. So it might, but he's still gonna need, he's gonna need to have more oomph on his punches against both fighters. But I'm just saying how I think his style right now, the low punch, keeping the low punch power of the low, and uh, just the pepper. I think it favors. Him best against Frampton, Warrington, and Quick. I think those would be the, the the easiest fights for him. Now, just outside of those three fights, then you can move over to like I said, 2018 is very interesting for Shelby. Now it's going to be very interesting. So from those three fights, he has those three choices, which he's probably going to do because those are more money making for him. But if he wants to unify and go that route, he got the WBO. Oscar Valdez, if anything, if anything, I would take that fight. I would, if I was Lee Shelby, I wouldn't go for Frampton. I, well, Warrington is his next mandatory, I believe. I think he's been mandated to fight Warrington. If I could, I would, I would be hard, I would be pressing hard to fight uh, 
Valdez at featherweight. As I think Shelby can school him rather easily. And then you have the WBA, Leo Santa Cruz, and then the, the, the regular Abner Morris. Both of those, both those guys are going to bring pressure that's going to be fast. So force him to move. It's going to be a fight that's a constant pressure. But I think he'll do better. I don't know. He, Adam Morris is a better boxer, I think, than Leo. But Leo's beat him with edging him just with. I don't know, that's that's a tough one. That, that that fight can always go back and forth. But I think I I think Leo. I mean, I think Shelby will have a better chance. I think I think his foot movement might be too much for uh, Leo Santa Cruz, to be honest. And I like I like Leo a lot, but. I think Shelby could get squeaked by with his feet. So if he could if he could somehow get one of these get one of these uh unifieds out there. And I'm trying to think who is the WBC? Is that Gary Russell? Is that is that Mr. Gary Russell over there? I believe it's Gary Russell, right? Yeah, so that'd be two that'd be two boxers Whoa. going at it. I think Gary Russell will really try and make a statement of that. He'll really try and put some bombs on um, Lee Shelby. I think he'll try and knock him out. But that that would be. I think that's the tough. I think that is the best fight for the champions for the featherweight Shelby and uh, Russell. That's a really good fight. But if I was a if I was a team Shelby. I would tax him like, hey, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he makes more money fighting warranty. And anyone in those uh, countrymen, well, only warranty and quick are countrymen, I believe. Yeah, Ireland for uh, Belfast. But I would ask him like, hey, do you want this much money or do you want that much money and a belt? You know. I would really try and set up that Oscar Valdez fight because I think he could beat Oscar Valdez pretty easy. I really do. Uh, that is my thoughts. What do you think of that? But I think I think a 2018 is going to be a very interesting year for Lee Shelby. We're going to find out who he is. What what is it, Frank Warren? We're going to find out what Lee Shelby got. Thank you for tuning in. Like I said, if you are a new viewer, hopefully this episode made you a new subscriber thank you very much ah attack of the spiders down here attack of the spiders have a good one